Okay, welcome to the formal lab report format. You're going to submit lab 16B, <coughs> excuse me, as a formal lab. And that means that it gets presented in the traditional uh, introduction, hypothesis, materials, procedure, data, analysis, results, conclusion. Okay? So here's how this works. Uh, you're going to include a heading. That should have your name, the date the lab was performed, and for different sections that will be different days. Uh, whatever uh, section you're in, this is of course honors chemistry. There are two sections, period three and period seven. And you know who that guy is. Okay, this title can be whatever you want. Um, uh, excuse me, this date should be the date, not that it is performed, but that it is submitted. Excuse me. Title can be whatever you want. <clears throat> this is a lab in which we are trying to prove Hess's law, so however you want to title this the date that the lab was performed, and whatever lab partners, if any. I know in this situation it's a little weird, but you're free to collaborate with whomever you choose. And so if you are collaborating with some people, just list who they are. Okay, introduction. This is where we run into some issues. It says one to two paragraphs describing any background information pertinent to the lab. Okay, in this case, who's Hess? What's Hess's law? What does it mean? What is enthalpy? What are uh, changes in enthalpy, exothermic, endothermic, and how are we going to apply these? One to two paragraphs. Remember that a paragraph is three to four sentences. So try to include at least that many and uh, try to cover the details. If there isn't enough background, I'll often mention uh, background. Uh, in other words, not enough. Okay. Your hypothesis section, that's this guy right here, consists of a statement predicting the outcome of the experiment based on the hypothesis. Use the if-then format. Some of you have seen this before. Here's what this means. If I go outside and uh, set the cutting height on my lawnmower too low, then I will kill all my grass. It's a good example of a hypothesis, all right? <clears throat> if I get in my car and go 85 miles an hour when the speed limit on the expressway is 75, then I will probably get a ticket, all right? A good example of an if-then format. Try to follow this, okay? This purpose section, not necessary. If you want to plug something in, you can. All right, the materials and the procedure, I list those in the body of the lab. Uh, it's not plagiarism if you are repeating instructions. That's not an issue, so don't worry about that. Your raw data is whatever data tables you have. And since I am uh, generous and have put a data table in there, just do a little screenshot. Use your snipping tool and you can copy and paste your data as it is recorded. I don't care if this is handwritten. However, I would like you to formally present your data in a data table. Now, if you want to copy and paste the data table from the lab and then formally present your data uh, by typing it in, that's fine too. But make sure that there is a title for the table, that every column has a heading, and that there are units. Sometimes the tables provided will have all these, I believe this one does, and sometimes they will not. So you'll be responsible for all that stuff. <clears throat> the results show the calculations. So in this particular lab, you are comparing three reactions, and the calculations, the instructions are in the uh, lab uh, report uh, handout that I gave you. So I'd like to see all of your calculations. That's where this comes in. This is the analysis. Okay, I'd like to see 
how you arrived at your conclusions. Let's remember that there is also uh, an analytical percent error formula. I'd like to see all these calculations. All right, now this part graphs. I know that you guys are honor students and that you're always uh, trying to do the best you can. There aren't any graphs in this lab, so don't worry about graphs. If you really want to stick a graph in there, you can, but there isn't anything to graph. We did three reactions and measured three temperature changes. There's really no graphs involved. Your conclusions and discussion. Uh, there are some guiding questions. Uh, what is Hess's law? But uh, a conclusion and the discussion brings us back to the hypothesis. Did our results support our hypothesis? Did it refute our hypothesis? Why or why not? If it did, great. If it didn't, perhaps that you should include some sources of error in your uh, discussion. Well, there's not gonna be a lot of sources of error in a virtual lab like this one, but there is a spot where it asks, if we were going to perform this lab uh, in the real world, in other words, if we were back in the building performing this with wheel apparatus, what would our sources of error be? Remember that the sources of error should be valid. Human error is not valid. You not reading the uh, instruments or the apparatus correctly, or not weighing something properly. How do you not weigh something properly? Those are not valid. I'd like to see at least two uh, valid sources of error. And make sure that as you are tying this back, let's you know, refer to our results. You had a percent error. Does your percent error help us refute or support our hypothesis about Hess's law? Okay. If you're going to cite any works, uh, please use standard MLA format. You can look that up. It says a lab report is typed using single or 1.5 space, not double. Uh, I'm really not all that concerned, but single spaced is fine. There's no uh, minimum pages on this. Okay. Uh, I don't think we're really worried about uh, making mistakes on our original data sheet, so don't worry about that. Uh, but this part's pretty cool. Make sure that you are treating this as though it is going to be submitted to a journal for publication. That means make it so that someone who is reading this journal who has no idea what Hess's Law is knows what you're talking about. Okay? Uh, I'm not worried so much about question number four. But no plagiarism. In other words, don't submit someone else's work as your own. Don't use my introduction. Don't use someone else's introduction. Teachers like myself who have done this for a long time are really good at recognizing when you are submitting work that is not your own. That is to say, if your introduction, your hypothesis, your conclusions, if those look like someone else's, mine, or your lab partners, it will bust you for academic uh, an, uh, an academic integrity violation. So please don't do that. It's just try to do the best you can to come up with something on your own. I don't care if they're similar. I mean, Hess's Law is Hess's Law. But let's not plagiarize someone else's work and submit it as our own word for word. Okay? Don't like that. All right, that's all I got. Here's how the formal lab report format works. See you later.